As we get into lesson 2.1, um, we're going to be entering a unit that is all about transformations. So congruent figures, translations, reflections, rotations, similar figures, and then we'll be solving for the perimeters uh, and areas of those similar figures. 2.1 kind of gets us off to a nice easy start in talking about congruent figures, which are figures that have the same size and shape. So keep in mind they have to be the same size and the same shape as one another. So we've got two examples of congruent figures here. We have example ABC and example DEF. We can see that they are both the same size as each other if you count the dots uh, and we've got the same shape as each other. So these are indeed congruent figures. They have matching angles which are called corresponding angles. And so that would be identified by that there. So these angles match, so they are called corresponding angles. And then they have matching sides, which are called corresponding sides. And that would be all three of these sides, but we'll just highlight those um, down there at the base. So all, all of these sides are corresponding sides. And of course, if you are going to have a shape that is the same size and shape, they of course would have corresponding angles and corresponding sides. If any one of them were different, the shape would no longer be the same. All right, so these figures are congruent. I apologize for the scratch out there. Try to ignore that. Um, so we're gonna name the corresponding angles and the corresponding sides. The first thing you might notice, uh, you might be tempted to say, well, these aren't the same. Um, size and shape. These are not congruent because they look like they are a reflection of each other. And that's absolutely true. It's like one has been flipped over that center line and like it's looking at a mirror image of itself. That has nothing to do with congruent figures and its definition. Congruent figures are simply the same size and shape. It has nothing to do with them being oriented the same on the paper. Okay, so we can turn these, we can reflect these as long as the shape itself is not manipulated you are going to have a congruent figure. So if we were going to be identifying the corresponding angles, uh, we would see that angle A corresponds with angle W. Okay, so we've got the 90 degree angle here in the same place. Um, B corresponds with X here. C would correspond with Y and D would correspond with Z. So those would be our corresponding angles, how one angle compares to um, its corresponding angle on the other shape. So then with corresponding sides, we're gonna be identifying the same thing, but of course we are talking about two points being connected to form a side. So angle or side AB would be corresponding with XW, BC, would correspond with XY, CD would correspond with YZ, and then AD, its corresponding side would be WZ. Okay, so we've got corresponding angles and corresponding sides. So here's the key idea we wanna take away from lesson 2.1. Two figures are congruent when corresponding angles and corresponding sides are also congruent. So again, same angles and same size sides. So we've got a lot going on in these two shapes. All this is showing that our angles are congruent to each other. And then our sides, this one being one, one, two, two, three, three. So our sides and our angles are all congruent. Okay, so they correspond with each other. In looking at these two shapes, you can see we've got two trapezoids. If you go back to that definition we've been talking to or talking about this lesson in which the sides and the angles all have to be congruent, if we are looking at the angles in these shapes, we would be looking at these four here. Okay, and so you could say, well, this angle seems to look a lot like that one and this angle seems to look a lot like that one but when you come up here you're going to find that these are much different than our wider obtuse angles here 
and that would be because these sides are not congruent. So we've got a space of two dots here, and then, and then here, of course, you've got three dots that are connected. I don't need to do any further investigation than that to find or to justify whether these are congruent or not. If you find one side or one angle that are not the same, then the shape cannot be congruent. So these triangles ABC, ABC, and DEF are congruent. If we know that the side angles here of in triangle ABC are both eight meters and the base is three meters, we also know that that information is true for the other triangle, eight meters, eight meters, and three meters. And then our final question that we're gonna look at is which trapezoid is congruent to trapezoid A? So if we investigate trapezoid A, we are looking for a shape that is congruent, meaning it has sides of four, four and a half, six, four and a half. You can also count the dots uh, if you're working with dot paper, which makes it kind of nice. Here I would just trust the numbers. If the numbers aren't the same, it cannot be congruent because obviously you're going to have different lengths of sides. This one is oriented similarly on the paper, but that does not make it congruent. Okay, this shape over here, it has been flipped. However, we can see that the sides are congruent. So six is congruent with six, four with four, four and a half, and four and a half. So as we delve deeper into 2.1, we're gonna talk about those, some of the words that I was using throughout this lesson, uh, flips, reflections, but do keep in mind as we go through each one, you know, maybe review the lesson from before, what was the definition? And once again, the key idea that we need to take away from 2.1 is that two figures are congruent when the corresponding angles and corresponding sides are congruent.